Yes, madam. My name is Kelly Robinson. I am a carver, and these are two of my masks. I've been fortunate enough to have people purchase my pieces for a decent pay. These two are not for sale, though. Selling my art, carving a piece of wood and painting it so it could live on a stranger's wall, that's not where the power of my people's art comes from. That's not where its life force, its strong vitality originated and thrived through the hard times. Carving art and selling it is a gift. It's only one dimensional though. I want them to live the way they would have in the past. I want them brought to life. I want them to literally live among my people. Let me take you with me on my journey of becoming a four dimensional carver. My father is Nuchano from the west coast of Vancouver Island, a Housett nation. My mother is Nukalk from Bella Coola, British Columbia. That's where I'm from. That's where I was raised. Where the language, masks, and drum beats are all unusually unique to those of other nations in the Pacific Northwest Coast. Where vibrant Nukalk blue graces its people's art where the dancers circle clockwise around the fire, unlike the rest of the coast. The Bella Coola Valley's rugged mountains have made a strong and resilient people, where the abundance of nature forces the people into strong relationships with the land. Growing up here, I was blessed to have a supportive family. Family dinners together are some of my favorite memories. My elders worked so hard to bring us all together in a good way. Times can be tough up here. We used to be great travelers. We would journey great distances, very great distances. So, it's easy to get stuck here. As with many nations, the recent past has us struggling out of a plague of trauma poverty and abuse. Our seclusion both helps us and harms us in this respect. I'm very fortunate to have been taught and groomed as an artist. I am a carver, and as such, I have a privileged access to my culture. I get to be a culture keeper. I get to learn my culture's ways, enjoy its beauty. I get to live by its teachings, and I'm birthing a new self-identity I'm very glad for. Carving art and selling it is a gift. It's only one dimensional though. This is the bear. And this is the raven. These are two of my masks. I'm very proud and honored to have been chosen to carve these for my people. They inspire me. I love having spent time with them. The fact that people would want to buy these is an honor. These two are not for sale though. Selling art is only one dimensional. These masks are the first dimension, so here are the second dimensions, part of what will make these masks come alive. These are the two new cult people who will dance these masks. These two will lend themselves to making my art richer and more dynamic. They take my art from one dimension to two dimensions. They will start the work of animating these masks, bringing them to life. Without these two, 
The raven could never soar, speak, or remind the new called people of a time when he brought light. The bear could never stalk or prowl the way bears do, or be a spiritual part of our people's realities. Now, the third dimension, that which will make the first and second dimension even stronger. These masks are not just pretty and entertaining, they have deep and important histories. These supernatural beings give us warnings, comfort us, teach lessons, remind us of our past and tell us of our futures. The singers breathe life into the dancers so that the dancers can bring these masks to life, telling their stories, their legends, their histories, and connecting them to their people. And that is the fourth dimension, the people. Chiefs give great wealth for people to witness his nation's success, their connection and their adherence to their birthrights. Set these first three dimensions, the masks and regalia, the song and legends, before the people, and I will have reached the highest possible expression of my art. They have long claimed that most First Nations are only oral cultures. We are, but not strictly. There is literature in our art, history in our masks, lessons in our lyrics, and legends in our poles. Like schools in their books, our ancestors passed teachings on to us through the rich body of art, which is our heritage. So, bearing witness to our maintenance of this heritage is integral to our ways. These dancers spend months in preparation to present their work. The drummers dedicate their lives to their art and keeping our culture alive with songs and rhythm. Place these dancers before their people and watch them gain power as they fulfill their important purposes. Place our musicians in the sacred ceremonial spaces and watch them gain strength and poise as they guide their dancers' feet with their rhythms while connecting our people to their riches. The people inspire the artists. In turn, the people are strengthened and inspired. This is the fullest expression of my art, when it lives with my nation, playing its part in the old original ways. There is nothing wrong with one-dimensional art, I just want to achieve a healthy number of four-dimensional pieces. In four dimensions, the elders see their histories being told. In four dimensions, the adults inspire the young ones. In four dimensions, the young ones are immersed in the culture and its customs. And from this interplay of four dimensions, we find the birthplace of innovation, cultural vitality, and thriving health. Having been blessed, danced, witnessed, and connected to my people's stories, my masks have now become four-dimensional. Our youth go home with the rhythms and melodies of our people in their hearts and minds. Our artists are re-energized and inspired to create. And so, we add to the age-old cycle, giving back to the people. Stutwinyotsk.